Hi, I'm Sean from Cruel Folk, and I really like bazookis. I mean, I really, really like bazookis. Not the uh, traditional Greek sort with the bowl back, but uh, I play the ones that are usually referred to as Irish or Celtic bazookis. Um, and I bought a few of them uh, because I really like them. And recently I've been trying to decide uh, on another one to add to the collection. And in doing so, I did some research on YouTube and I found um, that there's loads of brilliant playing, really nice playing. Um, but there were two problems. The first was that the recording quality could be a bit uh, variable, to say the least. And the second was that there wasn't really much in terms of comparison between instruments by different makers um, and instruments of different scale lengths, different body sizes and so on. So I thought, why not make a comparison video um, using my instruments uh, and that's what you're watching and I hope you find it useful. So I'm trying here to make a comparison video um, and do it with a really close regard to recording it well in stereo and getting the best um, possible sounds that I can out of these instruments. There's going to be a part two because as I said I've got another one on order so part two is going to be an unboxing of something very very special uh, and then a bit more comparison with the instruments in this video. So if you want to hear some different bazookis um, carefully recorded uh, so that you can hear the difference between them, keep watching. Okay, first up. Um, now this is already a little bit unusual uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, this is a filed Octavius bazooki. Um, I'm not sure the file actually lists these anymore, but I think uh, maybe the website says something about being able to make them to order. Anyway, if you find up Roger at Filed, I'm sure he'll uh, he'll tell you whether you can get one or not. It's slightly unusual among bazookis in that it's a flat top with a pin bridge, as opposed to an arch top um, with a with a floating bridge and with the strings anchored at the end. Um, so it gives it a bit more of a guitar-y sort of tone. Um, it's also octave strung, okay. So the two lower courses are strung as octave pairs, whereas usually you see these things unison strung. Just gives it a bit of a different character. Um, all these instruments are tuned GDAD um, from low to high, which is fairly standard for this kind of instrument. Uh, this guy has a, a cedar top, um, so it's a bit more mellow sounding, I think you'll find, than uh, some of the other instruments I'm going to play for you. Um, it's got a well, it's either a mahogany or a sapili back and sides, I think. Um, this is a relatively old one. I bought it second hand, probably pushing 20 years ago. Um, so I'm not sure if that's mahogany or sapili. I think the modern ones are made with sapili, but again, uh, check it out with filed if you if you want to know what a what a new one might be made of. And that looks. I'm fairly sure that's a mahogany neck. Um, the fingerboard and the bridge are rosewood. I think Indian Rosewood there. Um, and that's about what I can tell you about this instrument. So, uh, oh, I guess the other thing I can tell you about these is um, I'll try and record a little bit of their sound with the pickup as well. Uh, and the pickups in all of these instruments are headway. Um, there's a mixture, uh, I think some have a snake, some have a fixed EQ, but they're all headway pickups. Um, all these instruments have a, a battery in them and uh, you can plug straight into a mixer or EPA. And uh, to my ears, they're nice pickups. So, that's the first one. Check it out.
Now, I strongly suspect that some people might be interested in the, the full gory technical details of how I'm actually uh, capturing these instruments. So here they are. I'm using a spaced stereo pair. It's a Neumann TLM-103 and an Audio-Technica AT4033. Um, and to my ears, that makes a nice sound. Uh, those are both going into Focusrite ISA220 preamps. And the outputs from those preamps are going straight into a solid state logic uh, converter box. Um, and then straight in, into the computer via an RME MADI interface. The recordings uh, made of the pickup sound are going straight into the uh, instrument input in one of the same preamps. All the instruments have brand new strings on them and I'll add the string gauges to the video so that you can see what I'm using. There's no enhancement here of any kind. You're just getting the sound as recorded by the microphones going through the preamps and straight into the computer. There's no EQ, no compression, and no reverb, no effects of any kind added. I want this to be as truthful a representation of uh, these instruments as I can currently give you. Okay, second instrument. And again, um, arguably, Perhaps slightly unusual. Um, this is a David Oddy Mandocello. Mandocello, yes indeed. Is it a bazooki or isn't it? Well, uh, let me try to explain. Um, David made these. Sadly, he's no longer with us. Um, but he's the maker, so he can call it whatever he likes. And I'm happy to go along with him. Um, some would argue that it can't be a mandocello because traditionally a mandocello would be tuned lower by another fifth. It would be CGDA, typically, or CGDD. Sorry, CGDG. Um, whereas this is tuned GDAD, uh, like um, one would expect a bazooki to be tuned. Um, it's a different shape to what you'd usually see in a bazooki, because it's got a much bigger and longer body. Um, it's also got a guitar length scale, so it's a little shorter than your typical long scale bazooki. Um, but I think you could call it just an Irish or Celtic bazooki with an unusual body shape because it's tuned right and it's got four courses and it sounds like one. Um, these were made famous by the guys in Show of Hands, which is how I first came across them. And in fact, this is the first good instrument of this kind that I bought. And it is beautiful. It's really, really a lovely thing. Um, what else can I tell you? Okay, so it's a Sitka spruce front. It's an ebony floating bridge and fingerboard. Um, the back and sides, Indian rosewood. A lovely piece of Indian rosewood. Um, and that's, oh yeah, the neck is laminated, and I think that's laminations of probably mahogany and rosewood. That was a special request. I think um, at the time, I think David was making um, a couple of those laminations out of Purple Heart, and I don't like Purple Heart. don't like the colour, so he did that as a, I think, as a special for me. But this is the great thing with ordering a custom instrument. Most makers will uh, make them the way that you want them. Um, again, it's got a pickup. I'll try and record as well a little bit of pickup sound. Um, is there anything else I can tell you about this instrument? I don't think so. I think that's what you need to know. Oh, well, the bindings, I think, are maple. And there's some nice shellfish inlay. Okay, so check this one out.
Okay, next we have, and yes, now I am being a little bit naughty, uh, because this isn't in fact uh, a bazooki, this is a tenor guitar. However, um, you can use it for exactly the same kinds of things, because it's still tuned G, D, A, D, um, and really you play it like a bazooki, um, and you pick it up when you want a more guitar-y sort of tone. And also just the sort of slight change in flavour you get by having four individual strings rather than four pairs. So, this is again um, by David Oddie. Uh, it's pretty similar in terms of its construction to the, the Manda cello, other than clearly this is a guitar shape. Uh, it's, a, I believe, a Sitka Spruce front. Uh, ebony fingerboard and bridge. A little bit of decoration here. Maple binding. Again, lovely piece of Indian rosewood for the back and the sides. Um, a laminated neck, which looks to me like it's mahogany and rosewood. And there you have it. Um, it's a pretty little thing. See what you make of it. And finally, at least for the purposes of this video, <laughs> this is a heavily customised um, bazooki by Filed again. Um, so this was a custom order, and I spoke to Roger Bucknell at Filed for a while about this because I was after um, something really powerful sounding. and. Uh, we, we came to the conclusion that uh, the, the spec would be a good one. And it's it's heavily modified. It's based on their archtop long-scale bazooki. Um, what, the, what are the differences? Well, I think there are two main differences. The first is that the front is Sitka Spruce rather than, I think he uses Engelman usually, uh, because I wanted more of that kind of tone. Um, so the lovely piece of Sitka on the front. Um, again, uh, ebony fingerboard and bridge. But the other the other big difference between this and the standard one is that this is a, a Brazilian rosewood, back and sides. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful piece of um, Brazilian rosewood here. Now, of course, we have to... Uh, we have introduced an elephant into the room, which is, uh, does Brazilian rosewood make any difference? Some people will tell you that the back and sides of uh, an instrument like this don't make any difference at all. Um, I profoundly disagree. I think if you listen to the same model of instrument made with uh, maple as the body wood and Indian rosewood as the body wood, you'll hear a difference. At least I, I'm pretty sure I can hear a difference. Um, and similarly, if you listen to the same model of instrument made with Indian rosewood back and sides, 
and a Brazilian rose would back in sides. I think the difference is clear. You can make up your own mind, okay? It's clearly an expensive option to go for Brazilian rosewood. Um, but to my ears, it's a different and, uh, I think, a wonderful um, sound. When you hear a really nice piece of Brazilian rosewood, it has this beautiful kind of metallic ring to it, along with these lovely, uh, these lovely overtones. Um, I think ringing is the description that always comes to mind for me. Um, so I'm... I'm happy to pay the extra and, uh, and, and, and have that built into this instrument. Um, what else? Well, you have these um, and really beautiful custom bindings and purflings. I'm not, I can't remember what the binding is. I think it might be tulip wood or something. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but it's very pretty. Um, and again, it's a laminated neck, which I think is probably mahogany and rosewood and possibly walnut again I can't remember if the thin lines are walnut it certainly looks about the right color but it's a it's a real beauty um, so uh, see what you see what you think of the sound
Well, there you have it. Um, hopefully that's useful. Hopefully it's given you some idea of uh, how these instruments uh, differ in their sound, their tone, their quality, what you might want to use them for. Um, please do uh, leave something in the comments. Let me know what your favourite is and uh, why you like it the best. I'd be really interested to know what your conclusion is. I know which is my favourite, um, but there's... Hmm. It's not out there by a long way, but I definitely know which one is my favourite. Um, anyway, if you have comments, feel free to leave them. Um, keep an eye out for the next part of the video, whereas, like I said, I have a new instrument on order. It wasn't built by Filed, or it's not being built by Filed. It's not being built by David. Um, like I say, sadly, uh, David's no longer with us, although uh, um, the, the company has been kept going by his son, who is still building the instruments. Uh, so. Watch out for the next video and I'll show you something um, else and uh, give you a comparison uh, so you can see how that sounds next to some of these. Thanks for watching.